Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Welcome to South Asia Newsline, I'm Lipakshi Khurana. Here are the top stories you're tracking for you. Denmark's royal couple meets Indian foreign minister in New Delhi. Activists in Germany highlight Pakistani atrocities in Balochistan. And communist rift plunges Nepal's ruling coalition into crisis. Now for all the details, Denmark's Crown Prince Frederick and Princess Mary met Indian Foreign Minister S.J. Shankar in New Delhi on Monday to boost bilateral ties between the two countries. Jay Shankar on Twitter said he shared with them various aspects of the new India in making. The conversation covered sustainability and digital delivery in particular, he said. The royal couple, who are on a four-day visit, also paid floral tributes at the Memorial of Indian Freedom Movement leader Mahatma Gandhi. This is the first royal visit from Denmark to India in two decades. India and Denmark share warm relations and their ties elevated to green strategic partnership in the year 2020. Well, moving on, over two dozen Pakistanis were believed to be among more than 60 people who drowned on Sunday when a boat carrying migrants to Europe crashed against rocks near a southern Italian coast. In a statement, Pakistan's Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif said reports of the drowning of Pakistanis in the boat tragedy are deeply concerning and worrisome. He said he had directed the Foreign Office to ascertain facts and take the nation into confidence. Italian authorities have said at least 81 people survived the Sunday accident with 20 of them hospitalized. The wooden boat which sailed from Turkey is said to have carried at least 150 people from Iran, Syria, Pakistan and Afghanistan trying to seek refuge in the European country. Turkey is part of one of the most used routes for human smugglers to smuggle migrants into Europe with Italy being the main landing points for those trying to enter Europe by sea. And with militants waging a fresh assault on Pakistan's police from hideouts in the border region adjoining Taliban-controlled Afghanistan, the security forces have been pushed to dozens of outposts for their defense. Provincial police in Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, which is considered a hotbed for militants of TTP, the Tehrike Taliban Pakistan, say that the force is suffering increasing losses as it bears the brunt of insurgent attacks while contending with resourcing and logistical constraints. Sarband and its eight outposts bordering the militant-infected region have also suffered four major attacks in recent months and slip a fire with unprecedented frequency, according to the police base there. The most important thing is that is to the TTP, which ended the ceasefire in November 2022 and restarted attacks in Pakistan soon after, are now spread in smaller groups across the country and among the civilian population instead of operating from bases in former tribal areas. This has made the police, not the military, facing the branch from terror attacks. Pakistani officials acknowledge these challenges but say they are trying to improve the capability of the forces amid adverse economic circumstances. Do the police need more resources? They absolutely do. We've tried to make uh, additional resources available to them. Uh, at the worst particular time of financial constraint, Moving on, gross human rights violations by Pakistan have continued unabated in Balochistan. Activists in Germany highlighted the issue of enforced disappearances in the region and the arrest of a woman named Mehel Baloch earlier this month, the whereabouts of whom are still unknown. Members of the Baloch National Movement staged protests in Germany over the past weekend against enforced disappearances in Balochistan and the arrest of a woman named Mahal Baloch by Pakistani forces on February 17, 
on fake charges of planning a suicide bombing. The protesters said Pakistan is targeting Baloch women in order to suppress the political voices in the region. But they will continue their struggle for independence from the occupying forces. They urged the European Union to review its policies towards Pakistan over the rights violations. Pakistan, and it is the duty of the world that they should ask the Pakistan, they should question Pakistan about the gross human rights violation in Balochistan. Rights activists have long blamed thousands of Baloch people have been killed or arbitrarily detained for raising voices against Pakistan's atrocities and CPAC, the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor. Ethnic Baloch guerrillas have also been fighting the Pakistan government for decades for a separate state, saying Islamabad along with China has been unfairly exploiting Balochistan's rich gas and mineral resources under the garb of CPAC. In news from Nepal, KP Sharma Oli led CPN UML on Monday withdrew its support to the government of Prime Minister Pushp Kamal Dehel, a move which has now forced him to take a vote of confidence within 30 days. Dehel infuriated the UML by pledging support for the opposition Nepali Congress Party's presidential candidate Ram Chandra Podil. PM Dehel had earlier agreed to support a UML candidate for the presidency, according to politicians in the coalition. Four ministers, including a deputy prime minister from another coalition partner, Rashtriya Prajatantra Party, also quit their government over the weekend due to the same issue. Nestled between China and India, Nepal has seen 11 governments since it abolished its 239-year monarchy in 2008 and became a republic. Political instability has scared investors and held back growth of its $40 billion economy. And moving on, thousands of members of the National People's Power Party in Sri Lanka were dispersed by police during a mass protest in the capital, Colombo, on Sunday as they demanded the local government election be held as scheduled next month. Police were seen firing tearing gas over the protesters. President Ranil Vikramasinghe, who is also the finance minister, has refused to release funds to the election commission, saying that funds were available only for essential items due to the current economic crisis. The island nation planned to hold local government polls on 9th of March, but they have been put on hold and a fresh date will be announced on 3rd March, the poll body has said. Sri Lanka entered a preliminary agreement with the International Monetary Fund in September last year for a 2.9 billion US dollars bailout but has to put its debts on a sustainable track before funds can be dispersed. Well, an eatery has opened in the central Indian city of Indore with dogs as the special customers in mind. The Doggy Thaba offers home delivery for its clients and also provides lodging options for dogs whose owners are working or have to leave town for a few days. Take a look. India's central Indore city has went up a notch in the list of pet lovers' favorite cities as it opened a restaurant come bakery, Doggy Dhaba, for dogs. Indore resident Balraj Jhala came up with this initiative along with his team, including his wife, during the coronavirus lockdown when limited resources and accessibility became an obstacle for pet parents and caretakers to feed them. Dogs of several breeds were seen wagging their tails at the restaurant. When the lockdown was done, people didn't get food at home, so we also supplied food at home. My team did it, and my team did it. Besides, the street dogs had to eat food from street dogs. Besides, the dogs who have to eat pets, they have to start their tip-in service. They have to eat food, and they have to make a bakery. बेकरी में केक कट बनाते हैं डॉग्स के क्योंकि डॉग का कॉर्डिंग है हमारा ढाबा इसी नाम में कि इंसानों के लिए सभी खोलते हैं तो यहाँ पर ने एक ऐसी पहल करी है कि डॉग्स के लिए भी कोई इनके लिए भी होना चाहिए इस The restaurant offers home delivery for its clients who cannot physically visit. The doggy ढाबा also provides lodging options for dogs whose parents are working or have to leave town for a few days. Although India is coming up with more and more pet-friendly cafes, it is yet to catch up with eateries that cater solely to animals. 
Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.